Who's Clayster is an interesting question, I guess. My name is James Eubanks, known as Clayster Online. All my friends call me Clay. Clayster! 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 Clay! Clay! I've been a professional Call of Duty player now for over 10 years. And uh, been playing for a super long time and streamer on the side, YouTuber on the side, but mainly, mainly a pro cop player. You know, I want to go out with a bang, not a whimper, right? Glad I'm back, I'm fighting. You know, I'm just happy to be here. I want to say ritual, just like uh, you wake up, you ease into like getting ready for the day, you get a little bit of caffeine in your shower, get some food in you. Then like your next step from there is kind of like getting ready to go ease in and warm up. And then what, we'll be like warming up like two hours before a match? Yeah, yeah, like two, two, half, yeah. we usually do. You don't want to walk in too early because like you play a lot of warm up scrims and stuff and you only play one match a day, so like sometimes you can't like you play too many warm-up maps, and you go into the match, and you're like you play it like a warm-up. So like you have to you have to get enough warm-up in, but still differentiate you know your warm-ups from your your one match on that day. Yeah, I mean some wins are sweeter than others, but we approach all the teams the same. Like we prepare the same way, we see them the same way. Like obviously beating some teams feels better, but at this point for us, we're just trying to get like any any wins we can get. So if we get any wins, we're happy with that. Nice. The origin stories of my Call of Duty career is actually pretty interesting. I was a Halo kid through and through, played Halo 1, Halo 2. Uh, first MLG event I ever went to was a Halo 2 event. It was Meadowlands. Really fell in love with that game and competitive shooters in that game, uh, specifically 4v4, you know, joined my little clan in Halo 2. And Halo 3 came out, grinded it a lot, but that was right about the time where you know, video games were having kind of a really cool explosion with like Gears, COD, Halo. The long-awaited video game. A major multiplayer aspect. It's exhilarating, man. It's an experience. Three, two, one. All my friends uh, from my hometown were all playing Call of Duty and I was still stuck on Halo 3. Eventually over Christmas break, one of them left COD 4 at my house on purpose because they knew I would play it if they left it at my house. I remember popping it in, loaded into a head, like a TDM for a couple games, and then there was like probably my fifth or sixth game, I loaded into a headquarters and was using an MP5 and just went on a crazy streak. And I think like that was the moment for me where I really fell in love with Call of Duty and was like, wow, this isn't so much of a team game as Halo is. You can kind of be a one-man army. So I think that's really where my Call of Duty career started. Well, why don't we check out uh, Clayster and see how he handles this pressure right now. Yeah, Clayster takes out Sid Rock, so now really... Good shit. No, get shit on. They're gonna keep up. Blue, good go. job. Let's go, yo. Go! Let's go! One versus oh! Clayster! Oh! 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 Clayster! Oh! 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 one clutch, the last member alive. I would say most anything there is to accomplish, I've done it in some way, shape, or form. Obviously winning three world championships. The X Games win when I was on Optic in Call of Duty Ghosts is still one that I hold pretty near and dear and true to my heart. And winning with the Optic Boys still is pretty special to me. And along the uh, world championships and X Games, I've won I don't even know the actual count anymore. Like I actually forgot. It's somewhere around 20 uh, major championship wins. I've accomplished a lot, and it's something I'm pretty proud of. But I'm hoping I'm hoping I can accomplish a little bit more. Shark has gone down, and Complexity has taken another MLG title. Probably the most winning team in the history of Call of Duty. I mean, winning seven out of eight or whatever it is at this point. I mean, ever since they picked up Clayster, they've been in the finals every single match. There's some crazy, crazy shit going on with the pro teams right now. Clayster 
was dropped from complexity, which to me is like the dumbest thing ever. After all the success we had seen, the entire way through, I was kind of like the punching bag in a way where I would just like take it all in and not really fight back. The getting dropped from teams issue that I have always had, uh, you know, I wish I could put my finger on it. It's Optic Clayster. Just yeah, devouring there's everyone. There's shot. Clayster's gonna get, gonna get it. He's gonna get it. He does Two get it. Two Clayster does. And he gets the kill. And Optic Gaming wins it. X Games gold medal champion. You know, I don't know really where to start with this video. Uh, basically, they told me I was I was off the team because you know I've worked my entire Call of Duty career to get to Optic Gaming. To be dropped from the team, you know, it's kind of like a dagger. So they dropped me uh, through uh, envy to denial. I went early season and we ended up matching up round one against Optic at Champs, uh, which was like the craziest matchups. The number one, number two seeds. We were number two, they were number one. Dropping Clayster is scary because a drop Clayster is better than any other one we've ever seen. And he just, he just becomes like a psycho. He becomes so obsessed <laughs> with with being better and winning and... That's his 29th, looking for the 30th. Clayster's has got 30 kills. Can he get another oh, one? Yes, he can. Play lighting up. Hardpoint Detroit. Denial Esports shocked the world by upsetting championship favorite Optic Gaming in their round one Another match. 30. We end up beating him and I put out the tweet, you know, throw me to the wolves and I'll come back leading the pack. Did you, did you see the Clay tweeted out, throw me to the wolves and I'll come back leading the pack. So he kind of like, yeah, that was the shout out to Optic and Envy. You know, we haven't won in 19 months. You need a change of pace, you need some fresh scenery, you need some new voices in your headset. I think I'm just a polarizing person, especially the competitive side of me. I can say things very honestly and truthfully that upset people sometimes. You know, if we actually sat down and went through each individual time where I feel like I was slighted or fucked over, Throughout my entire career, we would be here for quite a while. We knew we had to make team change. We knew we had to make a change that would better the team. So it, we talked about it openly. We said dropping clay for gunless or trading clay for gunless would be the best for both. You know, hopefully I can eventually just stay on one team because that's what it's all about. Like I'm almost a little tired of building brands for organizations and then just kind of like not getting anything in return, like no equity in the company, no reciprocation. Like when it comes to like long-term holdings, it's really just, I'm like building up other brands just to get dropped or traded away eventually. So it's a little tough for me in that aspect. Uh, but honestly, when it happens to somebody as much as this happened to me, you have to hold yourself accountable in some way, shape or form. I mean, if you're the common denominator in a situation that keeps happening, then it's time to like look at yourself. I think something that that's something I've tried really hard to do over the last few years, especially towards my uh, the end of my time on E United. Uh, and I think since then, it's been more frustrating political stuff. You know, winning champs with the United, oh, it goes franchising, oh, the team splits up. I couldn't have asked for more. We all have rings now and we achieved our goals this year, baby. Winning champs with Empire the next year. Oh, you know, it goes 4v4, you know, I'm the odd man out. Three young guys in Krim. The 4v4 announcement came in and barely 48 hours later, Clayster has been removed off the squad. New York, visa issues, Zuma retiring, uh, Hydra didn't speak English. And then going into the next year, we get Krim and Neptune. The team is a miserable failure. I get benched. Like, there's like, it stacks up and it's, it's, some of it is my fault, and I hold myself accountable for being that kind of polarizing person, especially when the team isn't doing well. But I've also really tried to work on it the last few years, and it's just really frustrating that it kind of still happens even after I've tried to be a better teammate, be a better leader, be more understanding, be less abrasive. And so, you know, I, I, I do think I have gotten fucked over in, in a few situations that were out of my control. It's just the circumstance and, and just the situation, like it was kind of just what had to happen. But I also think all that adversity that I've had to face throughout my entire career has been a big driving factor into why I achieved what I achieved. And I think that just always having that chip on your shoulder and always having that drive to prove it to, like a lot of people want to be like, oh, I want to prove like everyone wrong. It's like, I don't want to prove anybody wrong or anybody right. I want to prove myself right. Like I wanna prove myself right or wrong. Like that's how I see things. And so it's like, I'm never like, while I play for my supporters and for the team I play for, my teammates, like I am constantly in a prove it mode with myself. What did you do last Sunday? Like, what did you do last game? If I don't play extra eights or play extra time, like I'm at, in bed at night, like why didn't you put in the work? Like, why did you wanna be lazy? Like, why did you wanna do this? And I, I think just that extra voice and that chip on my shoulder has always like driven me in the right direction. And so, while some could say like I've gotten screwed over in a lot of different ways throughout my career, 
I kind of consider it a blessing because it's allowed me to grow mature as not only a teammate and a player, but as a person and like deal with this kind of adversity and other things and in my real life because some of the stuff I've had to deal with has been tough and it's been hard to get through, but you know, it's all just, you know, minor steps towards where you want to get. Win our hard points, win our D's and search. Let's go. Can we get a game one, please? Playing MW3 is definitely a blast from the past. Obviously for me, playing these old maps where I played on them, I think it was like 14 years ago at this point, and I was a pro in that game. It's uh, the first game I ever went pro in Call of Duty in 2010 was MW2. And so playing on these maps again, here we are 14 years later. Uh, it's definitely weird. The maps played differently. Can we just avoid Skid Row everything? Can we just veto Skid Row, Skid Row, Skid Row? Like Skid Row Control 2, bro? Like, I don't care. <laughs> Can we just veto Skid Row, Skid Row, Skid Row, please? Can I just not play this shit map, dude? There's still, at the beginning of the game, I was like, kind of like muscle memorying into angles and spots. And I'd be like, why am I here? And I'd like look to my right and there's like a really cool angle you could see. So there was definitely some like novelness in that and like knowing just a little bit at the start. Uh, but honestly, with new modes like hardpoint and control and just how S&D plays and with slide canceling and stuff now, the maps play completely different than they played back in the day. So none of the old strats really work. Uh, just some like fundamental stuff kind of works a little bit. But for the most part, I mean, we were all playing on tube TVs back then. Like it's a lot, it's a lot different now. On them, but here we go. LA Deeb's gonna be starting so on that shoulder that? side for now for P1 going into P2. It's Should I save my for that guy then? Gonna get taking down some nice shots in for okay. Fella. Okay. Oh my God, we're talking about Joe uh, skill early on. He's yeah, uh, showing that, and just trying to continue yeah, dancing. Unfortunately, sliding yeah, right into one. Okay, early, fuck, bro. I'm going around the back. I mean, I'll just, I said, let's fucking go, man. Let's go, Isaiah. That's what I'm fucking talking about, baby. Kids are fucking shit. Now the pressure on to Royal Ravens to try and work this defuse. Joe Deceives. Shots on point. Nate blowing up everything. Cammy hitting one guy up. It's Clay last alive and he is gone in Afro. And LA Thieves take over, being down one to four in this map five to win it six four. That's five straight rounds. It was a different Thieves team once they got going. Start of the season has gone really, really poorly. Uh, I mean, there's no other way to cut it. Um, it's just been a lot of moving pieces, a lot of uh, instability, and we just are having to re-go over fundamental concepts quite a bit. Uh, but it's, it's a work in progress. We're showing life now. We're showing signs of being competitive. And so the outlook of our team looks up instead of down, which it kind of was looking a little grim there for a while. Um, we were happy about winning a map, <laughs> which if you're at that point anywhere in your uh, career, then you know maybe it's time to reevaluate. But we're looking a lot more competitive now. The team feels better. Uh, just still got some issues to work out with the location and, and the visa issues and stuff. But while it was not looking really good, I, I think we're on the right path. Experience showing up to an event and not playing on the first day. Obviously, being in losers bracket, that means we didn't play on Thursday. We just played on Friday, but it was actually kind of fortunate for our team because that meant we got an extra day of land practice with the squad. Because our team had only been formed for literally seven days when we showed up on that Thursday, so getting an extra day of reps is important. Obviously, COD tournaments never go the way you expect them. We played the loser of Minnesota, New York, and New York looking as good as they did online, and being defending world champs, uh, supposedly pack a punching and stuff. We figured that you know New York could probably win this series. It's guys, he's so far away trying to get his run on, but no, the crown has fallen off the head of the subliners. 
but I think Minnesota came out and 3 0 them, and we ended up having to play New York first round. So it was definitely a surprise to us, but also I think it was a good test for us because it's like, hey, if we can beat New York, we can probably beat a lot of these other teams. So it was a nice challenge to, to have them first. New York it is. They're checked. That was a very checkable series, bro. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, I thought ours was bad. That, made you, that was worse. That was way worse. They just got three chances to win a control, two worse. chances to win a hard That was point. way worse. That it? was an insane 3 0. I said I played in New York my first event when I jumped Florida last year in Losers, and we beat them. They lost 3 0 winners. And then we played them the next day. This kid used to just take my. We used to play SD tournaments together while he was 13. And he would just come home from school and just re just farm us. I was literally just donating to him for like a year. Fellow was my credit sponsor back in Black Ops 2. Yeah, I used to, oh, we would run 2v2, so I was like, he was so good, I was paying for him. He's like, send me the credit card. Send me the credit card. Yeah, we're about to get some food with the boys. Uh, we had a really good day of scrims yesterday. Um, today, we started off a little sluggish, I would say. Um, and then going into our warm up scrims, which, you know, our teams that are playing winner's bracket today. I feel like we really turned it around and kind of found our tempo again for today, which is, uh, you know, really good going into tomorrow. Um, the only thing that probably I would say is a little bit of a change up from maybe our expectations is I don't think anyone necessarily expected New York to get 3 0'd. Um, 4 0'd, even. Yeah, four, some may even say 4 0'd. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be prepared for no matter who we play. Um, obviously, they're a really good team. They picked up Sib this year. But. At the end of the day, bro, I think we have what it takes to beat them. I think we're one of the best respawn teams right now. So as long as the work that we put in in S&D over the last week translates to our matches, I think we'll be all right. Thank you, Tyler Felony Johnson. Indeed. Make some noise, everybody. We are live at Fenway, the MGM Music Hall, downtown Boston. At the end of the day, COD is COD, and I think that people put too much weight on who the top teams are and the bottom teams are. I think it's a any given Sunday thing where legitimately any team can beat any team. Left and middle, so like we should never be losing. Yeah, we should never be losing that side of the map. He just said it was his fault. It's fine. But I'm saying like that comes like someone should have filled in P2 with opponents. It doesn't matter if the team is number one, team is number 12, or anywhere in between. Like anybody can beat anybody if they're playing well on the day. The respawns have looked good. We'll see if Felony and the lads can get going early. He is playing with so much hype, so much energy. Name on its head. Just completely shifting it and going nuts. And speaking of going nuts, it's Gwyn with the pistol. That is banging right now. MCW. Here we go, baby. Just five to go. He's able to take out one. Gwyn, good job. Just get on. Friendly Clayster is roaring. It's a map one victory. And then Fellow's able to work the pick, and Fellow's gonna find another one with the angles. Look at the play calls, how confident they are with the way they're playing this map. Now, if you are Royal yeah, Ranger, they're gonna rotate. the track back on the other side. Sib is going to get dropped. Gwyn wants to get involved. Fellow winning another. Sky's now left alone, trying to get there in time. See if he can just this get him off. off. Can he get him? Not gonna happen! 2 0 edge to Carolina! Map four, terminal underway. Like you're tracking. Hold on, now. terminal trying to get Hold here. Hold on, now. start to line it up. This is where you were subliner. You had a chance to run away with it, but now Clancer is clipping wings. And the drop shot is in. That's six in a row for him, and up to nine and nine. But the next hill right here at P2 is so important here for Ravens. If they win the majority of this, ah! they can. You can feel it. You can taste it. It's waiting in the wind. It's Clancer with two. This one is done. See you later, New York. Felt 
good, man. I mean, obviously coming to land, getting our first win as this squadron. I mean, we're, we're getting the momentum going. Hey, that's just one. There's a lot more coming, boys. We do not play it today, right? We get, the, we get a room now, right? Yeah! Let's fucking go, baby. I've never experienced that. Let's go. We got our own room. Woo! You remember, we, got, we were out of here fucking quick last time. Hey, boys. We won a game two! Yeah! Tony Hagen player? Come on, James! Nice win, dude. What are you guys fucking talking about? You guys look good. We've been playing so much better ever since the roster change, and even Tej is playing phenomenally, like see? in place of Jose. So we can all see it. Yeah. It's Everyone can see how much better. I mean, it's like it's like night and day. Oh, for no, sure. It actually is. The People pacing. were kind of criticizing the fellow pickup, but he honestly takes so much off my plate, and we share it, so I can like be more free on the you map. And Johnson you and know? Johnson have always been like and you're close. super close, yeah, and, super close. And I feel like that goes a long way, especially like obviously before you made the roster change, struggling a little bit, and then you pick up Johnson. Now you got like a friendly face that you can oh, just kind of bounce and vibe off 100%. of. It's gotta feel good because now you guys look fucking. Good. A lot of people were obviously saying this was like a nepotism pickup, like because me and Tyler are really good friends. We trialed a couple players, and after practicing with all these people, we're like, okay, this guy gets kills, but we're still lacking structure, or this guy has really good comms, but he's lacking kills. And there was no clear answer. We debilitated for like eight hours, all of us in a call for a long time. Gwyn, Isaiah, uh, and Jose both agreed that, that Fellow was the best option in terms of getting our team where we want it to be. It's more so the in game stuff and kind of seeing the game in a different perspective. And I think that that's what Tyler really helps offer. And he's been playing super well this year. Fellow sounds a lot calmer than he used to be. Like, oh, yeah. in the comms, like, he used to be like calm. Motor mouth. Yeah, just <laughs> I mean, that was his motor mouth. Yeah. 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 Motor mouth. No, he, I think his time in Challengers actually did really well for him. Like, the amount of time he's been in Challengers and then on Florida last year, he was like the leader of that team with like Vickle, Capsule, and stuff. And he was like understood, understands now like leadership role. And so I think he's just calmed the way down and is like so much more calculated than he used to be. Because really? before he was just going so ham. Ooh. And now he's just kind of like. So this was the last time you played Team Elite. We even sat in the same two spots. <laughs> That's so same, sick! That's that <laughs> fucking sick, dude! <laughs> I'm gonna make that my header. That That's exactly. actually fucking sick. We were so... And I hate that people think that they can kind of knock on his skill and talent as a player uh, and say that I only picked him up because we were friends. It's kind of disrespectful and, and it's, you know, it's hurtful. And so I think that just kind of understanding that this decision was made with that not in mind at all and really just focusing on everything else. We're a lot more competitive now. We're playing a lot better. We're still a fresh team. We're getting there, but we look a lot better. I, I, learned, I learned to not even like put that. I learned to not even put that when I, but when I I before a match, I envisioned my breaking point saying 1.5 and our series saying 3 or 3 1. Those are the only two thoughts I allow in my head before a match. We're here day three, and so is Clayser. That's the biggest surprise for me. The man in his 15th year has led his team into the final seven. Our mindset after the New York run is that we were winning the whole thing. Uh, I honestly thought with the way we were playing respawn and how close everything was looking, uh, how tight everything was looking, I, I thought we stood like a pretty good chance in terms of like actually winning. Good luck, man. Good luck. This Cinderella run going. How much better TJ is in this title? Cutting the lead down in front, pushing out the cuts. Royal Ravens come in and strike first. Playing it dies. Clay sends it, tries to get to the bump. Heavy. Stun gonna go out. To round five we go. You're gonna have to win this if you were Carolina on offense. Four dead alien hook spot on up. Gwyn is on the point. You have two players on. as well. <laughs> 10 seconds for Surge. TJ Clay going to drop. Five seconds to go. Have Surge been able to do this? They're finding all the kills. And
golden rule, bro. That's all it was. What the fuck's the golden rule, man? Chowing out a fucking hill, bro. Or Somebody chowed out of this fucking hill? Not right people. Here. Bro, like from this situation, bro. We should, oh my god, bro. You he had your cross too, man. And I got the third kid. Yeah. Bro, what are we doing? Bro, like literally, we went here. I killed the kid on pinch too. This is the last fuck. Yeah, it was over, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, bro. Oh, yeah. And even from this point, and then we get fucking two piece because we get double fucking stunned, man. And you should be looking ladder from here, bro. Did we knew this kid was the last one here. If you're front DVD, you can see this ladder hop. I was looking at ladder. No, he climbed it. Look, if you're front DVD I right know, here. Maybe I was stunned or some shit. No, look, know. you look at the street. If you just sit here and look at yeah, this. Yes, he I didn't know he was hitting ladder. You guys are in a fucking 2v1 and you're screaming out we're flying at him. So no, I didn't look ladder. But like, that's the only I'm other thing. I'm trying to fucking, I'm trying to cut the people that are reinforcing, dude. I'm not talking about this shit right now. I cut one game fucking 12 different times. Oh my god, like bro, from here, we should win! Oh my god. We honestly, we won the first two respawns, lost the first S&D, so 2-1 going into map four, had a major lead, and we just blew two win conditions. And that's what we've been so good about in respawn, is just capitalizing on our win conditions in every respawn mode. And we were so close and had it like, it wasn't anybody's fault. Like we all made a mistake that could have won us the game. It was just devastating to lose by like three or four seconds going into a map five. We were just kind of deflated and we just kind of knew our s &D wasn't where it needed to be. So uh, kind of shot ourselves in the foot there, but we just didn't have a lot of time. We were on our last break. We had one break and no one waited. We tried to. That's why it hurts so bad because like we literally had it, bro. And it was just 3-1 and we're gas going into this optic match. Our respawn's untouchable, you know what I'm saying? So the SD is whatever, bro. Like we had barely any reps. Whatever. And it's like you can't expect to win three respawns in every series, especially out of land. But we fucking had it. We had the three respawns. We all kind of realized how good we are at respawn. Usually when you form teams super quickly, respawn is what's lacking and the S&D can be kind of like click right away. And so for us to be in the rare occasion where our respawn is clicking without a lot of practice and the S&D being the thing to fix, that gave us a lot of hope because we can fix S&D. We all are good S&D players. We know the strategies. We know how to like fix mistakes and surge. And respawn is just sometimes like get a kill, you know, don't get smoked right here. Like you can't really teach that. So. Uh, relatively positive, just went over the maps, discussed some of the things, and I think we're all, uh, we're all excited to get back to the drawing board once we get home. Why I'm still competing is because I want to win. Like, I just want to win again. Like, give me one more tournament win and I'm out. Like, I don't care if it's a ring, I don't care if it's a major, whatever. If I can just get another tournament win before I'm done, I think personally I'll be satisfied, even though I already am. It's more so like, I always have these gaps in my tournament wins. I mean, it was a big thing back in the day. I went like 1400 days without winning. It's multiple years and like, I'm almost there again at this point. And it's kind of like, can I do it again? Like. Can I go out there and do it again after everyone thought I couldn't? And that just kind of like driving factor, I think, is, is what I still have left to do. A lot of people ask me like, what's your favorite tournament win? And like, it's such a hard answer, but honestly, most people assume like the rings or something like that, but it was actually that win where I broke the, the, the curse the, that I had been through the drought. But just for me, just like the satisfaction and like of like proving it to myself again after so long, like, oh, here I am again winning another tournament. I've done absolutely everything there is to do. I set goals, I achieved them. I could have retired years ago after the Empire win. I could have retired after the United win and still been satisfied with what I achieved in Call of Duty. And why am I still playing? It's because the feeling of winning, <clears throat> not only a tournament, but just a match on stage in front of a crowd is the best feeling in the entire world. I'm chasing that dopamine rush from winning on stage and the feeling of that 
is it's an intangible thing, but it's something that's so powerful that it like drives me each and every single time I go out to compete. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Like I'm happy with what I've accomplished. I'm super proud of myself and to be where I'm at today, uh, coming from where I came from in high school and in college, uh, it's just a super big blessing and I'm not dissatisfied in any way, shape or form with how my career is going. Legacy is a crazy word. And I think that when people ask me, what do you want to be known for? Like, what do you want to accomplish when it's all done? I mean, to be known as one of the best, most successful, most accolades, like whatever, however you want to quantify it, one of the best of all time, uh, that's what I want. And I think I've accomplished that. And I think like, no matter what, if you ask me what my legacy is or what I want it to be, I think I've already established that. It's just one of the best of all time. Considered in that conversation, top five, just up there. I've raised some kids in the scene who are now some of the best in the world. And just to see my trees and my branch go out, man, I think uh, it's a special thing. <laughs> Fuck you, Olive. And Olive agrees. Fuck you. Right. I'm sure some of that's gonna be unusable, but.